So what I want to look at today are the steam tables. So steam, because this is related to water, it's not stream with an R. The version I'm looking at is the Rogers and Mayhew 5th edition, brown book with a red line on the front. It's a soft cover book, of, cover book of about 32 pages. It's called the Thermodynamic and Transport Properties of Fluids, so it has steam tables at the front as well as some other information at the back. If you don't have a version of this, please make sure that you look at the back of Feld and Rousseau or one of your other energy balance or thermodynamics textbooks. They're often versions in the back there. Okay, so contents we will skip. Notation and units are specific to each version that you use, so I'm going to skip those two. And I'm going to come down to page two, and we'll start here where it says saturated water and steam with three sets of information across the top. We have temperature, pressure, and specific volume. We then have the enthalpy HF of the fluid, so that is liquid water, the HFG, so that's the enthalpy for the phase change from the fluid to the gas, so that would be to steam, and then the third one being the enthalpy of the gas, so that's the enthalpy of the steam. The third set of information on this is the SF, SFG, and SG, so that's the entropy of those three. We will not worry about that in this course, but please make sure that you know that this is where to find it when you need it for your third year course. Okay, so in terms of what this information, what we can get from this table. So first of all, we said temperature, pressure, and specific volume. What I want to first do though, is to draw a specific diagram so we can get an understanding of where we are headed on this section. So I'm going to draw a diagram for the temperature on the x-axis and the enthalpy on the y. If I start at liquid water, and if I want to increase the temperature, I'm going to add heat, or add energy, which is going to increase the enthalpy. So as I increase the energy or the enthalpy, the temperature increases, and that is for the liquid. At some point, we're going to get to the point where there's a phase change. Where there's a phase change, we then need to add more heat to get it up to a gas. So we don't change temperature at this point, but we carry on adding energy. We add energy, add energy, add energy until we get a complete gas. So the point at the bottom is called a saturated liquid, and the point at the top is a saturated vapor. The bit in between is the phase change, or it's the enthalpy of vaporization. When we go up, when we go down, it's the same as the enthalpy of condensation, but obviously with a different sign. Once we've now got our saturated vapor, if we increase the energy or add more heat, the temperature will again increase, and that will be the vapor. What temperature does this happen at? So what is that temperature at the bottom where this phase change happens? If we're at the coast, we're going to be at 100 degrees Celsius, and that is only because we're at 1.01325, 1, 1,01325 bar. So if we have that set of conditions, 100 degrees Celsius, at 101.325 bar, then water will change from a liquid to a vapor as we add energy to it, okay, because of that temperature. So what happens in this table now is instead of redrawing that diagram over and over again, we move to the bottom of page 2, we can see that at a temperature of 100 and at a pressure of 101.325, so that is the temperature and that is the pressure, we are now being given the set of information for the graph that I drew above. So just quickly redrawing it, we have the saturated liquid, just making the red dots big so you can see them, the saturated liquid and the saturated vapor. We're now going to get the 419 is in fact the value of the saturated liquid, 2675 is the value for the saturated vapor, the phase change, the HVAP, that is the value in the middle, 2256.7. And if you actually look at it, if you take the value on the right, the 2634 I've highlighted, minus 3139, you are going to get the value in the middle. So strictly speaking, we don't need this value in the middle. We could calculate it by taking one value, subtracting it from the other. Okay, so that is at the coast. If we had to look at this from a different altitude or a different pressure. So in Gauteng we slightly lower pressure, 
So let's just say we're somewhere there at the 0.8 value for the pressure. Water will then boil at a lower temperature, which hopefully you recall from your science, your physics and chemistry classes, that water does not boil at 100 degrees Celsius when you're at a lower temperature, a lower pressure rather. Okay, so this table starts at 0.01. And if you have a look here, something that I didn't highlight before, we have set a value of zero. So at a temperature of 0.01, that's just above the triple point of water, we are going to assume a basis of zero. So we said in one of the other lectures that energy is always relative to something else. It's always a difference. So in this table, that basis is 0.01 temperature. So everything else on this table is related to that. So that is page two. We start at 0.01 temperature, degrees Celsius, and we move all the way up until we get to 100 degrees Celsius. Okay, again, entropy, we're not worried about entropy. On page three, we again have a similar heading, saturated water and steam. So we again have pressure, temperature, specific volume. We now have an additional column or two columns in the middle. So the two columns in the middle are now UF and UG. It's the internal energy of the fluid, the water, and the internal energy of the gas. So that is the steam. Again, we have the entropy for the fluid, the phase change, and the gas, and entropy we are going to ignore. One difference here is that the columns have been swapped around for pressure and temperature. So previously we started with 0 0.01 temperature in the top left. We're now starting with a pressure on the left-hand column. The only reason for this, for page 2 and versus page 3, is to make your life a little bit easier if you're asked a question of what is the pressure or what is the enthalpy for a temperature of 35 degrees Celsius. 35 degrees Celsius is not here, so you'd have to interpolate. But if you look on the previous page, 35 on the dot might be there. So you can use one page or the other. The numbers are the same. So you'll see that if you can find something that matches, you'll see that they are actually the same. Okay. Please take note in your own time, the units and some of the values that they give at the bottom for unit conversions and things like that. Okay. Page three, as we said, is now swap the pressure and the temperature. It started at 0 0.0612. We move down all the way to one bar. The next page over, we now start at one bar. So the next page is exactly the same material. We go down to 40 bar. So there's nothing new there. It's just higher pressures. The following page, we start at 40 bar and we go all the way down to 220. Again, with pressure, temperature and specific volume. Just to note the specific volume, for those that haven't noticed, the units are cubic meters per kilogram which is the inverse of density. So if you had to swap that around, you would effectively get the density of this. Back to this page though, we start at 40 bar, we come down to 220. We then jump to this interesting number of 221.2, not 225, not 230. That is the critical point. So the critical point above the critical point, you no longer have a liquid. So we only have a vapor phase. So when we jump over to the next page, we're not worried about the temperature. We're only, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. We're not worried about temperatures and pressures above that point just yet. Okay, so that goes up to page, I've lost my page numbers now. So please just check what page that is, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so the next thing on the following page, we just first want to go back to our diagram of temperature versus enthalpy. So we said for now that we have a saturated liquid, which we've got at the bottom. Let's just highlight it there. A saturated vapor at the top, which we get from our values. Okay, so that's a bad example because of the critical fluids. So the values for the vapor, the values for the liquids, sorry, the other way around, are given there as the saturated liquids and saturated vapors. What about if we now increase above that point? So if we increase above that point, we're now into that yellow line that I've drawn there. So that is now called superheated steam. So any steam that you heat above the phase, tran the transition phase, the phase change at least, that is now called superheated steam. And you can really see in the page that I'm about to go on to that we now have a page on superheated steam. So there we can see page six. So page six, 
is going to give us information of that yellow highlight bit that I have on the top there. So we now don't have the same columns as we have before, we however have groups. So if I just highlight the group in this instance here, we now have the pressure on the left hand side of the top with the temperature underneath it, so we've got a 0 0.01 bar and a 7 degrees Celsius. They give us in the second column the specific volume internal energy enthalpy, so these values here. If you go back on the previous pages, you'll see that those values actually match for the specific pressure temperatures that they're given you here. But we're now looking at temperatures above the boiling point. So the boiling point on this instance was said is quite low, it's really low, it's 7 degrees Celsius. So anything above 7 degrees Celsius, so we're now across the top at 50, 100, 150, they now give us the values for the specific volume, enthalpy, internal energy, depending on the temperature that you've got. So we've got different sets of information. So what that is, is if we look at that diagram, the different temperatures on my tick marks there would be the different temperatures at the top, and you can now read off the different values on the graph. Or not read them off the graph, you just take them off the table here. Okay. So if we go further down the table, we've got exactly the same thing, but you'll now see that they are starting to get some gaps in here. So if we look at a higher pressure, so let's look at something at the bottom. So if we have a pressure of 4 bar, so at pressure of 4 bar, the temperature where that phase change will happen is 143 degrees Celsius. So again, we're given the information that we had from previous pages. Now, obviously, at 50 degrees Celsius, the water hasn't boiled yet. At 100 degrees Celsius, the water hasn't boiled yet, so there isn't any information on those two columns, only when we're above 143. So 150 is now above that, so they give us the information, as well as 200, 250, 300, all the way up to 500. We can get the different piece of information for each of those temperatures on this point here. Please make sure you notice, I drew over it earlier, the units that are involved in this section here for the superheated steam. Okay, so superheated steam on this page 6 ends at 4 bar. If we carry on to the next page, we're now onto 5 bar, all the way down to 70. The units are still the same. This time now we're superheating up to 600 degrees Celsius, so it gives us a little bit higher temperatures. The page after that, we're on 80 degrees Celsius all the way down and again to the 221.2. Okay, so it gives us all that information for superheated steam up to 700 degrees Celsius. The note is on this page, we will now see that the specific volume has a 10 to the negative 2 value to it. So please make sure that when you're comparing, let's just say the 70 bar, so if we look at the 70 bar here, the specific volume is 0 0.029, 0 0.03, so it's 0, 0.0 something. When we now move over to the next one, it's 2.9, 3.2. So that 10, point, 10 to the negative 2 clearly indicates we need to multiply by 10 to the negative 2 to pull the decimal points across to make that 0, 0.0, followed by the number again. Okay. This table now ends on 221, which we said was the critical point. As I was jumping a little bit ahead of myself earlier on, above 221 bar and a temperature of 374.15, once we go above that pressure, the temperature is no longer important, so we only have the pressures involved here all the way up to 1000 bar. And again, we have the different values from 350 degrees Celsius superheat all the way up to 800, and you can read the values off here. And again, just make sure you know what units you're using. In this instance, there is no more internal energy value that's been given. On page 10, we now switch back to water. So everything else was on the phase change as well as the superheated steam, we now come back to further properties of steam and water. So the table looks very similar to the tables we've had before, we again have temperature and pressure, however we now have a specific volume, but please just make note that this is now the specific volume of the F, the fluid, so this is the liquid. So we said if you take the inverse of this, it's equivalent to the density. If we take the inverse of these values, so let's just take this value here, 0 0.0001, the inverse of that, the density of water should be a thousand. If we take the inverse of that, we are not going to get a thousand. But they do tell you that the units are 10 to the minus 2. So just please look at that. How do you convert that value of 0 0.1 inverted 
with that tenth minus two to get to a thousand. And just make sure you put the decimal places in the right place. Now we'll leave you to look at how you do that. Okay, so the same information is given again. There's 100 degrees Celsius and 101.325 bar for the water boiling at the coast. We do now have different information in this table. So this one gives us in the next columns, we have CP, so the specific heat of the fluid and the gas, the water and the steam. There is roughly 4.186, the value we've been using so far, which actually corresponds to a temperature between 10 and 20. That 4186 is on 15 degrees Celsius to the dot. If you change the temperature, you change the CP. The same thing with the gas. So if you have steam, the CP is 1.87. And I think you've seen that before in the heat exchanger example. The next set of columns is the viscosity. So we've got values there that we're not going to be using very often in this section, but we will later on. The next set is K, which is the thermal conductivity, which we had in heat transfer. So if you need the heat transfer coefficients for water, you can come to this table and read it. The last column is the Prandtl number. The Prandtl number here in this last column, we are not going to worry about in this course, but please remember this is where you can find it for your third year courses when you asked about Prandtl number. Okay. The last page that I'm going to do in this video is about general information for water. So this page has additional information for what is the triple point, what is the, there's a bit of a unit conversion here, what is Kelvin to Rankine to Fahrenheit. There's some information about compressing water, so it's not just steam now, but what if we compress water. And we also have some information on saturated ice and steam. So saturated ice and steam, how do you get saturated ice and steam? And we've already told us at the top, actually, the hint there was the triple point. So there's some information about the triple point in this table here. Again, for internal energy, enthalpy, entropy, which we're not using, as well as the specific volume. And the I is for ice, so this is the value for the solid, as well as a repeat information on some of the gaseous values. Okay. The last thing on the section on water for this video, we have some isentropic expansion of steam. Again, this course, you do not need it, but please remember that you will need this in your courses in third year.